everybody, and welcome back to Above the Tree Line podcast. We are here with Austin Christian Hi, Fellowship Lauren. Pastor, Will Davis Hi, Jr. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Will. I'm interrupting you because you said I didn't last week, so. Yes, you will. And I'm Lauren Thurston. You're a Lauren Thurston. And and you're really good at what you do. <laughs> and, and I'm going to be hosting this conversation. We have a question that I'm actually kind of excited to dive into, <laughs> honestly, and um, it is regarding marriage. Um, Mawage. So, Mawage. Mawage. Love. True love. The Sorry. question here is, in a marriage, does God want the man to be the leader, or should a marriage be based on egalitarianism? If the answer is male headship and the wife rejects it, then what? So then what, Will? So, what, okay. so define, <laughs> First, let's define let's, egalitarianism. Yeah, define okay, define so terms. egalitarianism is basically saying that regardless of gender, the male and female have equal worth and equal roles slash capabilities. And the other term is complementarianism. Complementarianism, yeah. which I also have a de definition for that. It means that we are equal in worth, but created with different roles. I don't think we should discuss any topic that has a name that has more than three syllables. I in know. It. So Egalitarianism know. Yeah, and complementarianism. Yes. Now we got to change. The so term. I have done. Okay. I grew up in a house where we talked about the male has to be the spiritual leader of the household. I can't find that that phrasing in the Bible that the male has to be the spiritual leader. No, it's not there. Okay. The I think it's implied mm -hmm. um, in the the whole headship of Christ, Ephesians five. Yes. The husband's the head of the wife. The head as Christ is the head of the church. Um, but I don't think it's stated explicitly. So I want to read that scripture. Yeah. It says, wives, bleh, submit to your own husbands as you do to the wow. Lord. <laughs> Did you just belt? <laughs> Lauren just burped on our it podcast. Was a scowl. That was a belt. Wives, scowl. submit to your husbands as you wow. do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now is the no, church... Wait, no, wait. Why would you groan at that? It's just the word submit is a hard one to No, you to need to swallow. add two syllables to submit. 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 That's how you need to say it. It's hard Submit, woman. because That's how you need to say it. if your if your spouse is not always in the right, or like we were talking earlier, if your spouse is not a believer, you still is the wife still called to submit. That's a really it's really hard, in all honesty. We we're joking around about it, and I don't want to in any way be callous about this because this the this verse and the teachings of submission have been so mis interpreted and have been used to abuse women and subjugate women, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get real serious about it. Um, it, it really, we got to go back to Genesis, okay, to get this, to get close to this. And again, ACF above the tree line people, we reserve the right to be wrong. Mm -hmm. You're hearing my best thinking on it, which on a given day, it could be really bad. So I'm telling you what I think biblically. I've studied the scriptures a lot of years on this. Susie and I try to practice this in marriage. But there wasn't, there's no such thing as a social structure without authority. Right. In God's world. Right. There's anarchy without authority. Right. And even in Eden, there was a social structure. Um, the social structure was Adam was created first, but God made an equal, mm -hmm. um, better half, so to speak, as I like to say. But when, when, the, when the chips hit the fan, I said chips. When the chips yes. hit the fan, let's get that. I'm mixing yeah. my metaphors chips. there. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> mixing my metaphors on that one. Um, God held Adam more accountable than he held Eve. It's called the sin of Adam mm -hmm. in Scripture. It's not called the sin of Eve. Right. And he did create Adam first. He made Adam first. And he first. gave Adam the job of naming all the animals. Yes. And he created Adam from dust and created Eve from, from Adam. Adam. And we, and as far as we know, Adam's the one who told Eve the rules about eating from the tree. We don't know that God told her because Eve misquotes it. So we don't know. But but when it came down to somebody's going to be held accountable, it was Adam. And so there is, a there is an even though I think male and female were created equal, um, there appears to be a male responsibility and authority level that isn't placed on women. But could that also be because of culture? Uh, no, I don't Back read, then. I, uh, again, if, if Moses is writing to the wonderfully former group of slaves, the Israelites, um, he clearly wrote in a Genesis 3, post-Genesis 3 world where women were property. Mm-hmm. 
Okay? Yeah, and men weren't even allowed to speak to women. But he's accounting the, the Eden account, mm -hmm. I believe, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So I can be skeptical of that, but I don't have any biblical reason to be skeptical about it because in Genesis, in Galatians 3, Paul comes along and says there's not male or female, slave or free, exactly, or educated, whatever it is, Gentile, Jew. It's all one in Christ. Right. So he undoes that hierarchy that's there in Genesis yeah. and that curse. So I don't think it was Moses looking through cultural lenses. I think he was looking at the way God did it, and Adam was held to a higher standard, maybe because he was created first. And then Paul comes along in Ephesians 5 and says, yeah, husbands are the head of the wives, just like mm -hmm. Christ is the head of the church. But how does Christ lead the church? And how does the church submit to Christ? It's joy, and it's, mm -hmm. it's open-handedness, and it's not heavy-handed. And so, though, and we always say, you know, wives submit. Well, the, ro the man's version of that is go die. Your job is to submit, Lauren. My job is to die. Mm. When nobody preaches that. Because that's the way Christ loved the that's church. That's how Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. He died for her. So I remember calling a friend of mine years ago, when Susie and I were going through some tough patch in our marriage, grappling about Susie, and he said, are you dead yet? <laughs> he said, call me when you're dead. Your job's to die. And it sounds like you're still breathing. So when you're dead, call me, we'll talk. And that's my role. And it's not even based on, I'm, I'm supposed to die for Susie, whether she submits or not. Well, there, there's an interesting question. If the husband, <laughs> yeah, please rescue me. If the husband does not hole. love the wife as Christ loves the church, is the woman's job still to submit to the husband? Uh, according to First Peter three, I believe so. Okay. Now you've got to be careful with that because um, in today's world, submission can be lead to violence or other things, and I'm not a, I'm not going to advocate for that, obviously. But yes, the the wife is to honor her husband as her authority even if he doesn't act like it or isn't worthy of it, as far as she can. How can, if he's the authoritarian and he's making bad calls, does she still have to honor she's that? She's hurt by submitting to her husband. She's also submitting to God. But what if he's doing something against God's word? Give me an example. Um, okay, <laughs> let's take uh, rejecting the spirit. Let's let's take the he's big a, sin. He's, he's a lost guy. Yeah, he's a lost guy. He's not a believer. He does not adhere to the word of God. She, the wife she, is a believer. She entered into that covenant, mm -hmm. knowing that. What if she was not a believer when she entered that she's covenant? She's still supposed to submit to him as best she can mm -hmm. and let God work it out. So the backdrop of this whole thing is prayer. So you're in a marriage, and maybe you're a female. I, know, I see this all the time, and you're further along than your husband is spiritually. And maybe he's not a believer, maybe he is, but you're married to him, you got saved in the marriage, you didn't, whatever. Prayer is the, the thing that changes things. But this, the scripture doesn't give that loophole. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 7 gives a loophole which says, if you're married to an unbeliever and they want to leave, you can let them leave, and they're not held accountable for it. You don't want to drive them away, mm -hmm. but you can let them leave. Chase them around with the Bible. You don't want to do that. Yeah. You're supposed to honor them. Just like we're supposed to honor leaders who aren't worthy of honor. But the positional authority is something we choose to honor. So a husband and wife are both do positional authority. And the wife, even if the husband is a bad leader or an irresponsible leader or has a spending addiction or whatever, she's still supposed to honor him as that role of husband. Mm -hmm. That's what biblical honor looks like. It's not based on performance. It's you just give it. And wives are supposed to give it to husbands and husbands are supposed to give it to wives. So in the instance of this question that we received, if the wife rejects the male headship, then what? That's her sin. And so what does the husband do? He tries to lead her. He prays, he prays for her. He loves her. He washes her feet. He doesn't throw, he doesn't throw his weight around. I think he tries to serve her. He, how, how does Jesus respond to people who reject his authority? Mm -hmm. He woos them. Mm -hmm. He woos them. And so I think if I'm a godly man and I'm married, I'm, I'm not, I'm married to a very godly woman. But if I'm married to a woman who does not want to follow my authority, then I got to, I got to honor her and love her. And, and she has the right to reject my authority, but now she's rejecting God's authority. Just like when a kid rejects their parents' authority, they're rejecting mm -hmm. God's authority. It's the same thing. Whether they're worthy of it or not, it's not the question. It's just honor. But if I'm married to that woman, I got to pray for her and wash her feet and serve her and be an example to her and pray that her heart changes and be someone worthy of her following. But that's her sin. If she's choosing not to submit to me, that's her sin. That's okay. not mine. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I did want to bring up the, the verse that you referenced from Galatians. Where Paul says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, 
no, nor slave nor free. It's a great verse. Neither slave nor free. There's no male and female. You are all one. Galatians 3.28. Big Galatians verse. Galatians 3.28. But him no, saying there's no, there's no male or female, I can see why certain people will grasp onto that and say, look, Paul undid this whole hierarchy of male over female. So you can be, see, I'm in the camp. Camp. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm going to be in a camp here okay. for you, Lauren. I'm in the egalitarian camp to some degree. I'm in the complementarian camp to some degree because I, the egalitarian says you're made the same. You're equal. Complementarian says you have different roles. I'm in both mm -hmm. those camps. I think Susan and I are equals and we have different roles. And we function well in our roles. Yeah. So that's equal worth different equal worth, capabilities. Different responsibilities. Okay. Different responsibilities mm -hmm. even. And w we try to be okay with those. But, but in the Davis household, we make decisions through prayer and we try to make decisions out of unity. So even, even, even in the Ephesians 5 passage where husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, wives submit to your husbands, the verse right before that passage, which is a transitional verse, Ephesians 5, 21, is be mutually submitted to each other mm -hmm. out of reverence for Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into roles. So he says mutual submission. Yeah, mutual. Then he says the, wives submit. Yeah, in, in the context of marriage. Mm -hmm. But the bigger thing is mutual submission in the Christian body. So I've got to, uh, my goal is to honor and defer to Lauren as best I can as a sister in Christ. My goal is to honor and defer to Susie as a sister in Christ as well. But now in marriage, I have a different responsibility. I've got to lead her. Mm -hmm. But the, but the, the, it's almost like Ephesians 5.22 and following is a sub point to Ephesians 5.21, which is be mutually submitted to each other in Christ. And that flows out of Ephesians 5.18, be full of the Holy Spirit. So if you've got a man and a woman who are both full of the Holy Spirit who are really trying to honor each other, this probably isn't going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. It's where you get one or the other who's mad or got an agenda or not full of the Holy Spirit, right. and you're having to make hard decisions. Right. So let's visit the other way. So we talked about if the woman rejects the male as the leader. Let's go the other way. The male isn't stepping up as the leader. Yeah. Is it the woman's job then to step up as the leader because her husband isn't doing it? Um, it, it, I want to ask, I'm not, don't answer this. I want to say, what does it mean to step up? But I think you let him lead as best you can. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you've, you've got to be willing to let the husband be who he is. And so you, for whatever reason, you're unequally yoked. Um, that would be more of a believer, non-believer than I'm just more mature than my husband. But your role is to let him lead and pray for him. Um, there are times when men abdicate leadership, women have had to step up, and they do it quite well. They're quite capable. But to the degree that you can let your husband lead and try to lead and honor his desires, now that you're in this covenant with him, I think that's your job, mm -hmm. even though it's going to be really hard because you really want to do other things that are more scriptural. But you're in covenant now, and you, you made a covenant to honor this man or this woman, whether they lead or deserve it or not. Mm -hmm. That's covenant. Mm -hmm. So it really goes back to m making really good choices in marriage, by the way. Because a lot of women, I've, it's mostly women who are godly and are more committed than the men. I've seen the other, but not as much. And they, it's just hard because yeah. they're like, yeah, I really want to tithe. I really want to do missions. Or I want to raise my kids to pray. My husband's not there. Right. You stood in an altar and said you were going to honor your mm -hmm. husband. But our responsibility is also to honor God. Right. So what if you find yourself in a situation where one spouse wants to raise their kids in the word, take their kids to church, and the other spouse does not want to do that? You want to honor God because it's your role as a parent to make sure your children have a relationship with Christ. If you're a believer, that's our job. And you want to honor that. But if your spouse is saying, I don't want you to do that, then what do you do? Pray like crazy. Yeah because you've accepted the headship of somebody if you're a woman who doesn't love God. Mm -hmm. And you entered into that covenant. And so you've now you've accepted that headship. And you, as best you can, you've got to try to honor that headship. Um, I think prayer is where you go, and you pray like crazy. And I've seen so many great stories, Lauren, of, of I think one here in our church. It's the greatest story. You know who I'm talking about. Um, this sweet wife and mama just prayed and prayed and prayed. And she used to come to church alone, and now she comes to church every weekend with her husband, and he's leading her and praying with her and leading his kids, and she just prayed him in. Mm -hmm. She fought for him. Mm 
and she prayed him in. Mm-hmm. I've seen that story so many times. Yeah. It doesn't always end that way. But this is why marriage is such a big deal. And this is why, it's, this is why you want to make good choices on who you marry because you're going to wake up one day with kids and you don't want to be on the opposite sides of that mm-hmm. fence. And stuff happens and people walk away from God. Um, but when you've accepted headship, then you've, you've got the headship. You've mm-hmm. got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And you honor God as best you can. Right. But remember, Paul told Christians to follow leaders who are pers- persecuting them. Mm-hmm. That's how important authority is in the Bible. Right. Now, I did not just endorse a wife taking abuse. Right. Don't anybody misread what I right. said. I'm not endorsing that. But authority is a really big deal in Scripture, and it flows apparently in the home through the man. Mm-hmm. That's the role in the home. So you mentioned tithing, for example. Yep. Because um, tithing is... pastors a, do that. Pastors <laughs> mention tithing. <I laughs> tithing is a biblical yes. principle. It's ACF, something that we're supposed ACF to do. ACF stands for always collecting funds. Always you know? <laughs> yes. it's collecting the tithe. So <laughs> if you have one spouse that wants to tithe and one spouse that doesn't, let's try it one way. Let's say the female wants to tithe, the male does not. Um, then the male is, or the female is supposed to submit to the male and his wishes, and they what, don't tithe. What I know a lot of couples do is typically, not always, it's a dual-income home. And the wife will say, are you okay if I tithe on my mm-hmm. income? Mm-hmm. And typically the man has no issue with that. If the husband says we're not going to tithe, I think the wife needs to submit to him. What's she going to do, tithe in secret? Like God's going to honor that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to tithe and not tell you? Yeah. You're going to money launder for the kingdom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the wife's got to submit to her husband. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what you get when you're married to somebody who's not following God. Mm-hmm. Now you're gonna, we're not going to tithe, we're going to miss those blessings, but I'm under your authority. So yeah. here we go. Yeah. So you also mentioned unequally yoked. Yeah. That was, that's a word that I grew up hearing a lot when I was a child. Like, don't be unequally yoked, um, which for people who aren't familiar, it's basically, you you can explain this. You've explained yoked before. It's a business term. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 14, I think, but it's a business term um, of entering into a business transaction with someone who has a different set of values than you do. And then it is applied to marriage as well in that passage. And so it, a yoke, you know, a, a yoke for oxen, you had, it was the same size, and you had two places, one for each head of it, each different ox, and it was both, both supposed to carry the same weight. Mm-hmm. And unequally yoke was you had one oxen who was doing all the work mm-hmm. or had a different set of values or whatever. So the image is, you know, you do not want to enter into a holy covenant with someone who doesn't honor the same God you do, mm-hmm. especially in marriage, which is marriage mm-hmm. is a holy institution. And so... We even dealt with this as a church in our early days, and we really regretted this decision. I'm going to get very honest with you here. We went in, we, when we got into this building, we took a loan from a non-Christian institution, and we were subject to their laws and their rules and their interest rates and their regulations, and they could push buttons and make us jump through hoops because we owe them $4 million. They weren't a God-honoring organization, and we, were under, mm-hmm. we were, had to be under their authority because we signed a contract with them. Right. So that's... That's not the smartest way to do business in the kingdom, honestly. And I, re- I regret that decision to this day. God gave us a building, and we got out of debt, but I regret that. De- that was the decision I would not do today because I felt like we compromised God's word. I didn't have the faith to pray the money in. Mm-hmm. So we got a loan. We put a bunch of money to a secular organization that had us jump through all kinds of hoops, and I regret it. And so in marriage, that's why getting, mm-hmm. choosing someone who loves God more than he or she loves you mm-hmm. Not as much, but more. So you had said previously, you're not talking about unequally yoked being one partner is more spiritually mature than the other. You're ta- unequally yoked is one well, believer and one believer Well, that can be a version of being okay. unequally yoked, and that's not uncommon at all because people grow at different paces. But I think the more direct context is like you're black and you're, you're night and day. Mm-hmm. You're, you're a believer and you're not a believer. Mm-hmm. That's the more traditional version of that. But you, it can be... Um, a lot of women in homes are simply more spiritual and godlier than their husbands. Women are more spiritually intuitive, I think. I agree. And I, th- <laughs> I, know, I know you do. <laughs> Shocked to hear that. And so the guys have got to work really hard um, to lead because they're women. Some of those women are on fire. They're kingdom warriors, and I got to work really hard to keep up with Susie because she's a warrior, and it's on me to lead her. And that means I got to run really fast because she runs fast in the kingdom. And um, it's on us guys not to forfeit. It's easier for God to say, hey, you just do it. Well, now you just abdicated. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm sure the, the first time of abdication took place when Adam was sitting there very quietly while he was having a conversation with a serpent. He was there. Mm-hmm. Now, Eve, you handle it. Mm-hmm. And she got deceived. Her, her sin was deception. His sin was just, we're just going to do this. Yeah. His was rebellion. It's the worst sin. Anyway, I'm digressing. But if there's a single parent household, regardless of the gender of the single parent, that person should be the leader, especially if there's not a male to submit to. You got to be the leader. Yeah. That's really hard, but you got to be male. You got to be mom and dad. So your answer to this listener, though, is to to love her, to honor her, to woo her. So the so he's saying that he's that trying she, to lead, and, and she, she's not willing to. She's submit. an egalitarian. Yeah, you don't you don't well honor her as a leader. Mm-hmm. Give her as much give her as much leadership as he can give her, but also he's got to step up and try to be someone worthy of her following. But does not fight over it. Um, pray for her pray that she's probably got a reason that she's pushing back on his authority and it's probably before him Mm -hmm. so pray that up but wash your feet yeah but don't abdicate right don't abdicate abdication doesn't work he's because because god's going to judge the family temperature on him not on her Mm -hmm. regardless of what she does Mm -hmm. he's going to look at that family and go okay it's got your name bro so let's talk about it not hers yeah he has to own that (laughs) man all right i know yes Equal in word. All you have to do is submit. I got to die. <laughs> okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never heard, heard it put that way before. Yes. But we're saying equal in worth, different roles and responsibilities. In marriage. In marriage. In marriage. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for diving into uh, this one with us. Always fun. These are fun. Above the tree line. And I'm not making up these questions. I know you're this not. Is, I think the you probably, the there's world. a smoke-filled room. I know there's a smoke-filled room. I'm sitting back there and I'm yes. secretly typing in everything myself. No, these myself. are great questions. Yeah. I know where you guys live and thank mm-hmm. you for asking them. Yeah. So again, thank you so much for sending these questions. Keep sending them to us. We love these, especially these real life examples of things that you guys are walking through. So you can send us your questions at azfellowship.org slash podcast, and um, we'll do our best to get through answering all of them to the best of our ability. (laughs) Yeah. You guys are great. Yeah. So thank you. And we will see you next week on Above the Tree Line.